Hello, I'm John Nightingale, a director at JCT and the symposium host. Now the 25th JCT Traffic Signal Symposium was an online event this year and I'm delighted to bring you a recording of one of the presentations. Now these recordings would not have been possible without the support of a select group of our event partners. So our thanks go to the Institute of Highway Engineers, ITS UK, keepadistance.co.uk, Siemens Mobility, TWM, and of course, our media partner, Highways News. Please check out their short videos, which will tell you about some of the products and services that they can provide. Now, I hope you enjoy this presentation, and we would love to see you in person for our 25th anniversary event in Nottingham Trent University in September 2021. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Um, uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I, I'm a system architect at uh, Danique. I'm also the product owner for Inflow in the UK. Um, and I'm going to take you through this um, fairly short presentation uh, showing you some of the um, under the bonnet features of Inflow and hopefully will be of, of, of some interest. Um, I, I've got to apologize in advance um, uh, the, the pace of this presentation, um, a, a sort of a under the hood or deep dive into into inflow in 10 15 minutes is, is a real challenge um, but I'm, I'm going to try and get squeeze as much in and, and not overrun um, I, I thought it would probably be worth reintroducing uh, inflow we, we did present it last year um, uh, but many of you, you wouldn't have seen it out in the wild not not in the UK anyway uh, so um, what is inflow well, Inflow is um, it's it's our next generation traffic signal optimizer or traffic control application, uh, akin to Mover and Scoot. Um, it's it's a scalable optimizer. That means you can deploy it on a, a isolated junction like Mover uh, or across a wider area or network or combination of of, of both. Um, it's um, it's core operation is distributed. So um, essentially, you have um, controllers communicating. Uh, with, with one another directly, uh, sending traffic flows, queues, uh, planning schedules, etc. And that's done on a second by second basis. Um, but there are various centralized management uh, and monitoring options. Uh, so you have a, there's an Inflow Central website, a web based solution. We've got a mobile app. There's also options for interfacing with UTC or UTMC. So that aspect is also pr pretty much covered. Um, it's policy-based uh, optimization, which I will go into a lot more detail later, but for now, we just have to understand policies are our inputs into the optimizer to, to help balance traffic flows. Um, and uh, inflow allows for different um, uh, di uh, optimization diff uh, of different traffic modalities. So trucks, buses, public transport, emergency services, etc. cetera. Um, CITS is, is, is baked in from the start. So capabilities like, like Glossa, uh, many of you would have heard of or been involved in uh, providing um, time to green, time to red or speed advice uh, via mobile app or some kind of in-vehicle uh, information service. Uh, also GreenFlow, which is um, uh, a Danique product name for, for truck or fleet priority uh, and cross cycle, which is sort of the equivalent for uh, cycle crossings, obviously. Uh, there's also eco driving and platooning, which, which unfortunately I'm, I'm not gonna have time to talk about. Um, so uh, finally, uh, as an introduction, what, what do you need to run Inflow? Uh, well, you need a, an ITLC controller. Um, uh, th that is a, a, a TLC controller that implements um, ITLC open standards and protocols that, that were developed um, under the talking traffic partnership. Um, I, I'm not going to talk about talking traffic. Uh, that's going to be covered by a colleague of mine in a later session tomorrow, I believe, uh, Alex Verpleur. Um, but essentially, if you have a Danique PTC1 um, uh, controller, you can upgrade it to an ITLC implementation uh, by adding an ACU or an application control unit. Um, there's a couple of photos there in the bottom right. Um, essentially, you would add that ACU module, uh, update some software firmware, uh, and you're good to go. Uh, once you've upgraded, uh, you can then run Inflow, um, but, but very importantly, and, and, and something um, I need to stress, uh, you retain all existing functionality. So you would have Inflow as an extra tool in your toolbox, so to speak, um, uh, with CITS capabilities and all the new bells and whistles, uh, but you don't lose any of your existing uh, functionality or operational or control modes. Uh, just wanted to very quickly touch on uh, the Inflow install base uh, or 
in other words, product maturity. Um, uh, there's sort of no get way of getting away from it. We are we're only just now deploying in 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 the UK. However, I did uh, want to stress we have already deployed in six countries over 40 road authorities, and we have over 500 intersections that are that are running inflow or inflow capable. Uh, many of these are in the Netherlands, um, but we've also got sites in Poland, Lithuania, Finland, Denmark, and Kazakhstan. Um, and, and we are in the final stages of, of deploying in UK uh, and Belgium. Um, the point I'm trying to make is um, relatively new in the UK, but we do have a, a lot of experience and a lot of successful deployments in Europe. Um, I'm not going to have time to talk about the iViewer. Um, the uh, link for it is in the top right hand corner. Uh, this, uh, this will also be covered by Alex in a later session. Uh, but it's essentially a tool that lets you uh, browse ITS uh, deployments so you can sort of explore the install base to a certain degree. Introductions aside, um, we're going to have a very brief look at uh, a number of key building blocks uh, with Inflow. Unfortunately, we're not going to have time to, to cover everything. Uh, we'll touch on uh, a bit on detection, uh, rules and relationships, um, uh, a bit on policy. We're going to have to skip priority, unfortunately, optimization and control. Uh, so, one of the key discussion topics that comes up about inflow fairly often is, is that of detection or detection requirements. Uh, now, inflow uh, supports a variety of different control modes, uh, and, and these have different detection requirements, um, but a lot of these overlap. Uh, for fully adaptive mode, um, the bare minimum you need is, is uh, link entry and stop line detection. Uh, essentially, you need to count the vehicles coming in and out of your, your link or approach. Uh, uh, adaptive mode, which is the, the main control method for inflow, is essentially the, the planning predict, uh, predictive algorithm that, that implements your policies. Uh, it is actually possible to run without stop line detection. Uh, you can configure default saturation flows and turning percentages, but you only get the, so uh, it, it's not truly adaptive in that sense. Um, and also you can run without link entry detection, but then inflow has to drop down to actuated mode. Uh, which is essentially your demand and your extension. It's not adaptive or predictive. Um, but assuming you have the um, uh, bare minimum, a link entry and stop line, then your next step up in terms of detection is uh, uh, detection category two. Uh, and this helps extend and cut your green, effectively your gap out functionality. Um, th this is actuated mode, um, but um, uh, inflow in adaptive mode can also use this de uh, these detectors basically to, to determine where, where your vehicles have gone uh, after, after uh, coming into the link or passing the link entry detector. Um, the next step up above that is detector category three, uh, and this allows you to extend for um, uh, vehicles and high speed approaches. So if you have a vehicle coming in at high speed uh, using uh, detection category three, you can you can help extend to you know, prevent hard braking, that kind of thing. And, and detection four is just an extension of that, where if you have multiple vehicles approaching on high speed, you can you can try uh, uh, extend to prevent um, uh, uh, head-tail collisions. Um, last category I want to very quickly touch on is virtual detectors. Inflow can actually derive counts for a, a virtual detector uh, using a downstream site. Uh, and it's something I'm just going to quickly demonstrate now. So still on the subject of detection. Uh, the screenshot you're seeing here or, or giving you a glimpse of uh, the Inflow Configurator tool. Uh, it's an integrated tool and environment we have. Uh, helps us configure and test and deploy Inflow. Um, this, this particular site is on Wakefield Road. It's one of several sites on a corridor in and out of uh, Huddersfield. It's a scheme we're currently working on. Um, and what is interesting, um, what I wanted to show here that's interesting is the um, eastbound approach uh, or link um, is, is missing stop line detectors, which we've already said you need for adaptive mode. Uh, the, the red lines you can see there on that on that diagram uh, or that model uh, are, are actually the signal groups or phases, but there's no actual physical detection. So hopefully you can see I've uh, now added a single detector into the middle lane, given it an appropriate identifier, uh, a virtual detector that is. Um, and then, and then I've uh, associated it with a downstream uh, scoot loop. Uh, so now Inflow will be able to derive uh, stop line counts uh, for, for, for that virtual uh, 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 detector. 
um, using the uh, scoot scoot loop uh, downstream scoot loop uh, when the signal uh, signal group is in the correct state. Uh, this is just one of many ways you can get around detection limitations to give you full full adaptive control. Uh, I'm going to have to run through this fairly quickly. So very quick look at rules. Um, again, this is going to be fairly straightforward to, to most of the uh, configuration and traffic engineers in the group. Um, so lot like uh, other optimizers, inflow um, inflow's operating space is, is, is largely determined by your, your stage sequences. So your stage design is still very important. Uh, essentially, you have to, well, first you have to start off doing designing your stages. Uh, you have to um, um, add your uh, stage transitions. Um, and, um, uh, and depending on uh, whether you want to add additional uh, uh, additional stage sequences you can use, uh, there's an option for adding stage groups uh, in, in inflow. You have to uh, design your priority stages, so things for handling emergency services, bu uh, bus, buses, public transport, that kind of thing. Uh, your signal group rules, uh, nothing unusual here, this is just your basic stuff like um, uh, your intergreens, phase conflicts, minimum fixed greens, etc. Uh, and finally, your signal group uh, relationships. Um, so any hard links between phases or uh, uh, run in time, run on time, common start, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're back on Wakefield Road. Uh, this time um, we're showing inflow with a, or inflow configurator showing a, a stage sequence for site 250K. A very straightforward sequence, um, stage one, uh, permits um, east and westbound phases to run together. Uh, to keep things simple, I've, I've removed pedestrian phases completely. Um, stage two um, allows west and southbound approaches to run together. And stage three is just the uh, south and northbound approaches. Um, very straightforward, nothing out of the ordinary here. But um, what I did want to show is uh, that Inflow actually provides a great deal of flexibility with, with your uh, stage design, uh, stage sequence design. So for instance, you can add additional transitions. So um, here I've added a, a conditional transition from stage five to stage one. Um, now I've added a uh, an unconditional transition from stage five to stage three. And finally, uh, I've permitted stages two and six to be repeated. Um, what I'm trying to show here is um, uh, you have a very high level of flexibility with inflow. You can skip stages, you can repeat them, you can add additional transitions, uh, and you can even um, configure additional uh, um, uh, stage sequence groups, uh, which give the optimizer, you know, a, a lot of flexibility, a lot of options. Um, so a little bit about inflow optimization and policies. Um, this is fairly complicated, but I'll, I'll try, um, try to sort of uh, he hit the key key topics. Um, so we, we've already touched on the fact that inflow is is policy based. Um, we mentioned that policies are inputs into um, the optimizer to balance traffic flows. Um, they are usually project or customer defined. They, they are outcome based. Effectively, these are expectations of what the optimizer should do or how it should behave. Um, so that's what they are at a high level. But what are they exactly in terms of implementation? So firstly, we need to understand a little bit about how inflow optimization works or, sim or specifically uh, traffic adaptive uh, optimization um, and that is through a minimization of costs or in other words inflow works on the basis of implementing the lowest cost solution um, so, so the next question obviously is what are costs um, and costs in this case are delay seconds uh, calculated per signaling schedule or per signaling plan Hopefully, uh, there's, a, there's a graphic in the bottom right that uh, hopefully will provide, uh, well, it provides a, a fairly abstract representation um, of, of, of the cost function. Uh, uh, hopefully, this will, will make things a little clearer. Um, the the, the y-axis uh, uh, represents the uh, calculated cost. Essentially, um, the higher the peak, the higher the cost. Your z-axis represents uh, the planning horizon uh, or the amount of time, the, 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 the um, um, uh, the, the, the inflow is, is planning into the future. Uh, and the x-axis uh, represents the schedules or the signaling plans uh, available to, to, to inflow, uh, essentially its options. Um, inflow will pick the, the path of least resistance uh, or the lowest cost uh, out of all the available schedules. Um, 
So we know Inflow will select the lowest cost or schedule, but how does it actually work that out? Well, um, uh, uh, Inflow uses a number of optimization or cost factors uh, for, for this very purpose. Um, so now we're talking about the bu uh, um, building blocks of policies themselves. Um, uh, these uh, cost or optimization factors, uh, well, I've listed them there. I'm not going to have time to describe them all, but if, if I pick on delay, um, delay is essentially um, uh, the loss of time or, or cost uh, waiting at a red light. Um, these optimization factors, they can be um, applied at different levels. So you can deploy it on network or area, which is essentially everything, or route, or specific signal groups or, or phases or combination thereof. Uh, so here's a very simple example of policy implementation. Um, we're back on Wakefield Road in Kirklees, um, and this time we're, we're a bit further east looking at three, um, three sites closely, uh, uh, space closely together, to, uh, sites 262 to 272. Um, so we're going to start off, uh, for, for lack of a better word, with a, a base policy of some kind. All inflow configurations will need, a, need at least one policy. This policy can be very simple and fixed. Uh, or you can have a number of policies interacting with each other, whatever you need to achieve. In this example, we're going to set up um, a base policy using the delay optimization factor or cost factor that we just talked about. Um, we'll give it a weighting of one um, vehicle seconds, and we'll apply it to the area. Uh, what this means is that uh, Denise, uh, sorry, Denise. <laughs> what this means is that uh, um, uh, the um, uh, delay or optimization factor will apply to um, all intersections across this uh, across this network, all approaches as well. Um, however, let's say the customer has a specific um, requirement. They want to ensure that sites through um, uh, 272K to 262K, um, uh, uh, he wants them to be well coordinated, uh, wants to minimize stops, um, across this part of the network or corridor. Essentially, the customer doesn't want one vehicles trapped uh, in between these intersections. Um, well, the baseline policy will not achieve this. Uh, so we add an extra policy, uh, but this time we use the stops optimization or cost factor, and we name it accordingly. Um, so what's important to note here is we give it a higher weighting. We apply it to a route. Um, the route has already been drawn in in this case. Uh, it's that green line going through the three intersections. Um, and now, uh, when the optimizer inflow does its planning, it will essentially incur a higher cost uh, for any stoppages along this route. Um, uh, and as a result, it will plan or try to avoid that from happening. Uh, so looking at it a different way, um, the optimizer will always select a schedule with the lowest cost and the schedules with the lowest costs will happen to be schedules that uh, uh, have fewer stoppages along this, along this route. So that's a very, very brief introduction to policies. There's, there's a lot more you can actually do, but I'm, I'm severely limited on time. Um, I, I've had to skip quite a lot, uh, uh, skip ahead quite a lot here, um, uh, but now we're looking at um, that last building block or control or testing. Um, at this stage, we would have configured our policies, um, uh, our rules, uh, and unfortunately something I didn't have time to cover is, is the actual uh, d defining our vehicle inputs and movements. Uh, but so let's, let's just assume that was all done. Uh, and finally, we get to the point where we can start and evaluate inflow uh, performance. Uh, and we do this through micro simulation. We evaluate the performance of inflow and uh, the behavior of policies. Uh, so in this very simple demonstration, um, uh, you can see um, we have PTV Vism in the main window. Uh, that's providing the traffic simulation. Um, and then there's three windows on the right-hand side, and these are uh, simulated DINIC uh, PTC1 um, ACU controllers running inflow. Uh, essentially what's happening is Vism is providing the timing and detection data uh, to the controllers. Uh, and the controllers or simulated controllers are providing signal state back to back to Vism. So essentially what we're trying to do here is, is simulate everything as if it was on street, but, but we're using Vism uh, uh, for the traffic input. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to go. Uh, I had a full slide on, on data evaluation, uh, but what I can quickly say is um, 
that the, the, the modeling you're seeing here, that this very brief demo, uh, there's a lot of data that's actually generated in the background. Um, so you, you've got data such as uh, signal group or phase performance, so number of stops, IG signal group, Q lengths, delays. Uh, we can also produce um, metrics uh, for routes or trajectories, um, uh, sort of data on average speed between uh, different intersections or, or across the entire corridor if necessary. Um, we can also, in this case, we have one extra requirement from, from Kirkley's, which was we need to show that inflow is not making emissions any worse. Uh, and we will also evaluate that through modeling um, uh, as that's fairly straightforward to do. Um, barely scratching the first surface, I know, but uh, time limitations. Um, and that's the, that's the end. Sorry about the lightning pace. Um, and I'm happy to take some questions.